That sounds very good. At the end of this lesson, you should be able to explain how sound is produced. Describe how sound is produced in humans. Explain with examples that sound requires a medium to travel. Describe the process of hearing in humans. Take a rubber band. Put it around the longer side of a pencil box. Insert two pencils between the box and the stretched rubber. Now, pluck the rubber band somewhere in the middle. Do you hear any sound? And what do you observe about the rubber band? Recall that the to and fro or back and forth motion of an object is termed as vibration. When a tightly stretched band is plucked, it vibrates and produces sound. When it stops vibrating, it does not produce any sound. That is the case with musical instruments. Can you identify the vibrating part used to produce sound in these instruments? Guitar, veena, stretched string, tabla, stretched membrane, flute, air column, mouth organ, air column, drum, stretched membrane, jal tarang, vibrating glass, piano, strings. We see that a vibrating object produces sound. Now, that was about the musical instruments and other objects. How is sound produced in humans? In humans, the sound is produced by the voice box or the larynx. Put your fingers on the throat and find a hard bump that seems to move when you swallow. This part of the body is known as the voice box. It is the upper end of the windpipe. Two vocal cords are stretched across the voice box or larynx in such a way that it leaves a narrow slit between them for the passage of air. When the lungs force air through the slit, the vocal cords vibrate, producing sound. Muscles attached to the vocal cords can make the cords tight or loose. When the vocal cords are tight and thin, the type of quality of voice is different from that when they are loose and thick. Let us see how the vocal cords function. The vocal cords in men are about 20 mm long. In women, these are about 5 mm shorter. Children have very short vocal cords. This is the reason why the voices of men, women and children are different. Take a glass tumbler. Make sure that it is dry. Place a cell phone in it. Ask your friend to give a ring on his cell phone from another cell phone. Listen to the ring carefully. Now, surround the rim of the tumbler with your hands. Put your mouth on the opening between your hands. Indicate to your friend to give a ring again. Listen to the ring while sucking air from the tumbler. Did you notice that the sound has become fainter? Indeed, if you had been able to suck all the air in the tumbler, the sound would stop completely. When air has been removed completely from a vessel, it is said that there is a vacuum in the vessel. The sound cannot travel through vacuum. So far, we saw how sound can be produced. Now, let us see how we hear the sound through our ears. The shape of the outer part of the ear is like a funnel. When sound enters in it, it travels down a canal at the end of which a thin membrane is stretched tightly. It is called the eardrum. It performs an important function. The eardrum is like a stretched rubber sheet. Sound vibrations make the eardrum vibrate. The eardrum sends vibrations to the inner ear. From there, the signal goes to the brain. This is how we hear.